Okay, I think we have waited enough. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to COMEX, Nigeria's leading commodities trading platform. I am Destiny Awata, and I am the wealth manager for market development. Today, we'll be having a webinar about the step-by-step -step guide to trading in COMEX and everything COMEX related. And we have two of our finest FX staffs with us today. I'll just share my screen quickly to begin with this. Okay. Please indicate if you can see me, my screen at the moment. All right. So if you are just joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are starting this webinar now. We don't waste anybody's time. We understand that it's Saturday. And thank you for making our time out of your busy schedules to have this webinar with us. So today we have two speakers. We have Yusuf Ogumbi, Head of Structuring and Origination FX. He's going to be taking us from what is commodities to the relationship between commodities and COMEX and everything that you need to know how the commodities come about and everything you need to know about commodities, FX and COMEX, the relationship. And we also have Stephanie Mills, who is going to be taking us through the step-by-step -step guide to trading on COMEX. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen now so that Yusuf can start, because we don't want to waste anybody's time. All right. Also, before Yusuf starts, let me just let you guys know that when you have questions, the questions are going to be taken at the end of the session. And if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat box or you can indicate by raising your hands and we'll take the questions at the end of the session. We have a Q&A &A session coming on after Yusuf and Stephanie has taken us through everything we need to know today. And yes, so I'll hand it over to Yusuf right now. Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon. Good day. Um, it's nice to have you guys join us today again on this um, conversation. And like we've said time and time again, we are glad to continue having these conversations with the public, with the market, with interested investors to let you know about the benefits we have in the commodities market. Pretty much we'll be talking about um, effects we're talking about the commodities market i'll be talking about some of the opportunities that we have here um we would also be looking at some numbers looking at some of the performance we've seen historically and trying to also let us know how we can come into this uh, market um basically um give me a minute uh, give me some seconds to actually share my slides um hold on Please confirm you can see my screen. Yes, we can. So um, just a bit of head up. We'll be juggling between two slides. Um, this particular slide is to provide some introductions um, to what FX is and some of um, the opportunities we've seen so far. The subsequent slide, um, which will be coming after this one, would also be looking at um, the performance and how to think about this market. Um, so just to dive right in, we think of the commodities market as an alternative investment space. And um, like many alternative, like other alternative investment opportunities, uh, it typically outperforms the conventional market. So you think of your equities, fixed income, and you look at the commodities market, the opportunity it provides, this market provides you a significant opportunity to increase your returns considerably. 
So looking at what FX is, we have a vision to be the reference point for commodities in Africa. Here at FX Commodities Exchange, the first private commodity exchange in Nigeria and uh, across sub uh, West Africa, actually. We think um, when, we, when it comes to commodities in Africa, we want to be the name that will, that will be mentioned. And then um, that's key, to our, key to, our, to our vision. And then when you think about the participants on the exchange, on the commodities exchange, you have a vast array of participants. You have the producers, you have the processors, and then you have the investors, which many of us, um, which, in which category many of us fall in. So you think of as an investor, your, your, your primary objective is how to deploy the capital, the funds you have, and some of the opportunities you can leverage and then pretty much trying to see how you can improve your return objective. So if, for instance, you have an objective to make a return of about 16 to 18%, for instance, um, the commodities market provides you a very fantastic opportunity to do so. Um, so when you are designing your portfolio of assets, so you are looking at um, putting in some fixed income instruments, some um, equity instruments, and then you are looking at improving the return profile of that portfolio, the commodities market provides you that very strong opportunity. An interesting perspective to look at it from is to say, um, so the producers and processors primarily act in the physical market. So they, they are buying the um, bags of maize and selling the bags of maize to one another. But then when it comes to the investors, they are pretty much leveraging on the financial instruments that have been built on the back of these commodities and trying to get some um, opportunity made. Um, long story short, investors can then take advantage of this market, bringing some capital and then expose themselves to the opportunity that are here. The way, the way this system has been, design, has been designed is such that um, investors can take advantage of this market from the comfort of their home without having to go through the stress of um, buying the commodities, storing the commodities in a particular warehouse and so related those kind of stress, um, those kind of troubles. The investors can pretty much by sitting in the comfort of their homes, by the instruments they are interested in, and then also make some returns as those prices and um, those instruments appreciate. And just to look at a brief um, review of the historicals, looking at what has happened so far during the year or during previous years. Um, so what we've seen is that the commodities market has been quite interesting in the last four to six years, if I'm not mistaken, such that um, on the average, the four-year average return for commodities such as maize, soya beans, and um, paddy rice has averaged between 32, 33%, and 18% respectively. Uh, what that tells us is that um, the commodities market in and of itself has um, provided superior returns to pretty much all other um, instruments in the market. Uh, and just in a basic layman way of thinking about it, this means that if I had bought maize about four years ago, every year my instrument would have appreciated by at least 32%. Um, and that means that today my instrument will probably be about 150% higher than what it was um, four years ago. Uh, and this is some fantastic returns if you, if you look at it from the perspective of other opportunities in the market. Plus, this is done on an exchange in a very, in a very secure and very um, investment friendly, investor friendly manner. Um, so that's on the maize, soybeans, and paddy rice. So if you look at the lower, um, the the commodities on the lower side of the of your screen, you see that you have cocoa and ginger, and uh, for these commodities, cocoa has done about nine percent over the last two years. Um, pretty much the lowest of all of the commodities out, uh, uh, outlined here. And then you have ginger, which has done about 71% over the last two years. In fact, ginger, so when you say the COVID-19 has been a blessing to a particular commodity, ginger has been one of those commodities. And um, it benefited significantly from the rally we saw in um, COVID-19. And um, from the effects of COVID-19, as some of us might relate with, 
we had instances where some of us were told to boil ginger or make it into tea and then drink um, ginger because it might help to prevent or protect us from COVID-19. I can see that a number of people are raising their hands. Um, so if you have any question, you can continue to drop them in the Q&A's feature um, or box. And that can help us to answer your question as we, when the time comes. Um, so when you think of um, the commodities market and you're thinking of the benefits the commodities markets provide you, there are three key benefits that the commodities markets bring. The first one is the, um, what we call an exchange rate hedge. So if you look at the commodities prices versus the um, foreign, foreign exchange, and in this case, we are looking at the Naira to dollar forex foreign exchange rate. It, it's, it has a very close relationship with um, this for, foreign exchange rate. And then by implication, what investment professionals use this to gauge, uh, they, so they use the, a, a metric called um, correlation. So what they use this to gauge is to gauge the relationship between these two um, items. So I'm talking about the FX commodities index, which captures all the commodities prices. And then you have the Nera dollar exchange rate. So if you have a very close relationship, as we have in this case, between the commodities prices and the Nera dollar exchange rate, it means that um, if commodity, if the dollar or the Nera dollar exchange rate is going up, which can affect your investment if you are invested in Nera, it means that the commodities commodities can help protect you against that kind of um, depreciation in the value of your investment. So if you invest a hundred thousand naira, for instance, on um, in commodities, and you realize that the price of of the naira dollar exchange rate is going up, there is a very strong likelihood that the price of these commodities will also go up, and they can help you balance that kind of um, depreciation in the value of your wealth. The second opportunity is what you call portfolio diversification. And this is important because um, if you have just instruments that are the same, so take for instance, you have just equity instruments alone, you have fixed income instruments alone, that means that you are exposed to the performance of that instrument. Um, so if that instrument is going up, everything is going up. If everything is coming down, everything is coming down as well. So that's not very healthy for your investment for your investment portfolio. So if you are thinking of it from a diverse, so you diverse, in order to protect yourself against that kind of a challenge, we typically investment professionals advise that you diversify your portfolio. So you have a bit of um, equities, you have a bit of fixed income, and you also have a bit of um, commodities to help you balance that portfolio. And what we've seen is that if you look at the relationship between um, your instruments, and by this I mean the equities and the um, commodities prices, commod and commodities generally, there's a very low relationship between them. And that gives us the confidence to say, if you include your commodities in your portfolio, if you include commodities in the portfolio, as portfolio you have, portfolio of assets that you own, it will very likely help you to increase the return opportunity that you have while not exposing you to unnecessary risk. Um, so that's the kind of opportunity that you have in, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you leverage on commodities for diversifying your portfolio. The last one we have here, even though it's not charted on, any, on this screen, um, is that when you invest in commodities, so we said over the last four years, commodities prices have averaged about 33%, right? But then if you look at a similar performance on the, in the equities market, for instance, or in the fixed income market, over the last four years, we've had an average of about 12% on the equities market. I think an average of about a similar average for the fixed income market, if not lower. So that means that if we um, have a commodity instrument that can help you return an average of about 33%, and you bring that into your portfolio, you can then see the kind of gains you can have um, on, in that portfolio by bringing in commodities. So the benefits of coming into the commodities market, about three of them, number one is the exchange rate hedge. So that means that even if you invest in Naira, there's a strong likelihood that your instrument, your wealth will not be eroded by 
exchange rate de depreciation. Um, the second one is portfolio diversification. So if you are design, if you are investing in instruments and you want to invest in um, commodities, it helps to make your portfolio portfolio of assets a better portfolio. And the last one is the superior return opportunity that the commodities market provides us. Um, so I would just permit me to pull down this screen. I will be sharing a second screen to talk about um, coming into this market, thinking about this market, and looking at how you can make some money off this market. So in thinking about the commodities market, we have a number of things that would um, typically influence this market. So you have um, your demand supply fundamentals, your weather conditions, your policies, and then um, the last class of factors is what we call the macroeconomic um, factors. So number one, um, looking at the demand supply fundamentals, this means that if there's anything, if there's any item that um, there's more demand than supply, like we know words on the street is that if there's more demand than the supply of any item, prices of, the, of that item will go up. And if there's more supply than the demand of that item, prices of that item will also come down. So that's pretty, that's the same thing that happens in the commodities market. So if you're an investor in the commodities market and you have an instrument, say you bought a maize instrument, for instance, and you put some money in it, but then you follow information that is available in that market and you realize that um, the price of the asset are going up. Then you try further to look at it and you realize that the demand for that item is way more than the supply of that item currently. So that means that the, there's only one direction for prices pretty much. Um, the, the, the price of that instrument will most likely go up. And we've seen that over the last two, three, uh, two years more or less in Nigeria where the prices of food items have been going up. And the, the reasons are not very far-fetched. The, the, the production levels have not been very strong. And then as a result, we are still consuming these food items, right? So it doesn't mean that because production levels are not very strong that um, demand will reduce. No, demand, if so, if demand is more than supply, there is a very strong likelihood that prices will go up. So the second item to look out for is the weather, it's because some of these commodities are still primarily agricultural commodities and the weather is very important for it. So if you look at how um, the rainfalls is performing, whether we, have, we are having a drought in the country or probably we are having a flood, we are having flooding in key producing areas. When any of this happen and the weather is not favorable for production, it will affect production and the volumes that are available to be sold will reduce. When the weather is favorable and the weather is good enough, the volumes that are available to be sold will also increase. And this typically affects the way the price would also move. The third one is what we call policies, policies by the federal government, policies by, the, um, by various regulatory authorities in the country. And the implication of this is that when the policy is favorable for any commodities, you typically see that the um, prices will go up. And when the policies are not favorable, more or less, or when the policies are in the direction of lower prices, prices will come down. So come to think of what we saw when the government shut down the borders to, um, to, to rice coming, coming in um, from outside the country. That meant that um, we only had what we had in the country to consume, and we saw the the, the way prices or um, the price of rice went up um, over that period. So policies are very critical, and it will be nice if we also pay attention to them um, as we evaluate the market. Um, the last one is what we call macroeconomic factors, and um, don't, don't mind the long. It, it doesn't really mean so much. What we are talking about here is inflation. We are talking about GDP. We are talking about exchange rate. So whenever the GDP, for instance, is growing, you can imagine that a lot more people will have more money to consume and then demand will go up. So it's likely that prices will also go up. And when GDP is declining as well, it's likely that prices will also have, a, have 
that kind of effect. So when the macroeconomic factor, like every other factor, is in support of prices going up, we will typically see prices going up. And when the macroeconomic factors are in support of prices coming down, you typically see the prices coming down. So this is what you have for um, as key drivers for this market. So you have the demand supply fundamentals, you have the climatic conditions, um, weather conditions, you have policies, and then you have macroeconomic factors. So these are very important drivers in the market. Um, so let's just look at a, an example of where we saw um, these things playing out together. So at the end of 2020, we saw a few things happening. So we saw that COVID-19 was still strong in the country and outside, even outside the country. And then we saw that economic performance was not very good over that period. Um, so, but then COVID, in addition to COVID, we also saw a period of time in the country where rainfalls were very, very minimal. And then we didn't have enough rain to support production of these key agricultural commodities in the country. So what then that meant was that what then that what what that meant was that um, the producing regions couldn't produce as much as they used to produce before. Um, so we didn't have enough production of maize, soybeans, and paddy rice. Um, and what that what that reflected what how that reflected in the prices was that we were expecting that prices would go up significantly over the coming months, um, so 2020, 2021. And um, I think it's important I mention here that even though we are talking about the production of the commodities, the production of these commodities in the country, we are actually talking about them because it's important to understand what's happening in this place so that we understand what will happen in the financial instrument. So whenever a financial instrument is designed on the back of a commodity, an agricultural commodity, what happens in the production of that commodity and the consumption of that commodity also affects the financial instrument as um, we might see moving forward. So we expected that price of commodities will go up. And then at the end of the day, we very many of us witnessed this um, in 2021 when price of food items, maize, soybeans, as you can imagine, uh, are going up significantly. So let us let me just stop here and then um, give us some opportunity to ask questions so that we can also clarify some other things as we move on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yusuf. We have some questions. Dio is asking, what would you say about the impact of the current insecurity in the country on the commodities market? So the impact of insecurity, so over the, if you look at what has happened in 2021, so at the end of 2020, we weren't mentioning insecurity as much of a challenge in, in Nigeria when it comes to food production, right? Agricultural commodities production. But now we can now see that it's more, yeah, it's more, it's more frequent and it's happening right in the heart of where food items are produced, these commodities are produced. So I would actually not discount it. I would expect that it will affect some of this production. So insecurity is a challenge moving forward. And I guess some of the efforts made to, uh, so we are still witnessing some of it. And um, moving forward, it will be nice to also consider insecurity as some um, factors that are driving commodity prices. So if you are an investor and you are watching out for it, it's a valid um, indicator to work out. Thank you. So, Dio, I hope that answered your question. If that answered your question, can you please send something to the chat box so that we know? So, we have some questions on the chats. Although I asked you to send it on the QA session of the chat box, we also have some people that ask questions. So, I'm just going to read one from Shola. So Shola is asking, how does effect contribute to improve livelihoods of the producers of these commodities? Come again, I didn't get the question well. Okay, so we have a question by Shola. Is asking, how does effects contribute to improve the livelihoods of the producers of these commodities? So, um. The way we've designed the exchange, so primarily, 
commodity exchanges are meant to solve problems. So some of these problems could include access to capital for producers, access to markets for producers, such that they are able to get the capital they need to produce, and then at the end of the day, get credible markets to sell their commodities. So that's one, those, so that's our mantra as well. So even though there's a lot of commodity trading actively happening on the system, there's this um, input, input program that we run every year such that imp, farmers that are um, registered under the system are given input in, um, in kind. So they get the fertilizers, the crop protection chemicals, in some cases seeds to produce. They get some um, extension services as well. They get um, insurance on the production process. And then at the end of the day, they get access to market to sell their commodities. So they are able to sell the commodities they also produce at the end of the day. So this is how we work with farmers as much as possible. We work every year to expand the network of these farmers. And then farmers embodied on the system are exposed to this program. And it's been it's it's been it's incre increasingly we've been seeing so much impact in that space over the last four years. We released our impact report sometimes late last year, and it shows that farmers that have participated in this program for two to three seasons have some benefits when it comes to food security in their household. They are higher the 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 higher income levels that they have um, above the farmers that don't participate in this program. Thank you, Yusuf. I hope that answers your question, Ayo. Um, Shola, your question was linked to insecurity. So Yusuf already spoke about that earlier. I hope that answered your question as well. So we have Foreign Shaw. I don't know. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. And he's asking, how long can he hold a commodity before selling? And he's also asking where he can get access to historical data. So I, I absolutely love the kind of questions I'm getting this afternoon. And I, I thank you very much for that particular question. So there's a cycle to investing in commodities. Um, so typically investors that would want to benefit from the cycle, the optimum benefits typically come in around November, December, and they run through, so all, all through the season. And so the cycle is November, December, 2021 till October, 2022. So that's the cycle. Um, if you hold that, that particular instrument, so take, for instance, you bought a, maze, a spot maze contract, and you hold that particular instrument till um, October 2022, it's advisable for you to sell off that instrument at that particular point in time. Because if you hold it, because the pricing is tied to the pricing of the com physical commodities, by November, December, there is a typical reset that we see every year. And if you but if you had bought at a very high price, you might just fall into a negative position. So that cycle, November, December to October 20, to, to the next October, then another cycle starts in the following November to October, November to October. So that's the kind of calendar year that you follow in the commodities market. As an investor, you have access to information that, that is available on the system. So if you go to comex.fxnigeria.com, you have access to, to information that is available on the system. But if you, I guess if you want historical data, you can reach out to the team and then we take the conversation up from there. Like Yusuf said, if you want historical data, is available on FX, and you can also reach out to the team on Telegram or via email, and we can give you links and every data you need. So, we have a question. Okay, so before we take the next question, I would like to be handled by Stephanie. So, can everyone hear me, please? Yeah, we can, Destin. Okay. So we have a question from Kayode, and it's asking, what's the risk level of the investments in this market? 
and what measures do you have to cushion the effects on your customers? So the risk is primarily the price risk. So if you come in and you buy a spot maze contract, so typically in investment professionals mention something they call um, risk reward profile. So if you look at the commodities markets, the risk is that um, you have price risk. So if you invest today, the prices can go down tomorrow. That's more or less like the risk you are exposed to. Um, as an investor, you are taking the, that risk Full, fully, because that also means that you can benefit from the price rally that can follow. Um, so that's one. In order to mitigate this particular risk, um, we advise investors to follow the market constantly. So you have to be active in this kind of market. You can't be passive. You have to be active, check the prices constantly, follow information. Then you take decisions on a constant, um, on a constant basis such that Every more or less like every two, three days, you are saying that, okay, I'm still holding my instrument. I want to sell off based on the information that is available now. I think these prices will still go up, so I want to hold. I think this information, based on the information that is available now, I think these prices will go down, so I want to sell. In addition to that, there are communities on the platform. So if you join any common community, the administrator of these communities, communities are mandated, obliged to provide you with this information on a daily basis. So they will send information to you, send reports to you, and that should support your, that should um, help you take decisions on the plot, on, on, on your investment, um, pretty much. So primarily the risk is price risk. And in order to mitigate the price risk, you have to leverage on the very many sources of information that are available on the platform. Okay, I sure this answered your question, Chima Obi. You asked what is, you're not clear on the need of a community. Yusuf just answered that. And you also asked, how do I become a promoter? And I can answer that for you. We have a promoter's training that we run. So you can reach out to any of the experts on Telegram or via email and we'll give you the necessary links to join on the promoter's training. So the, so the next question. Is also, someone is asking, uh, Chima will be also, is asking, can he receive the commodities physically if he chooses to? So for spot contracts, um, unfortunately, you can't receive the commodities physically. But then if you are interested in taking physical delivery of your commodities, there are other contracts on the system that um, you can buy that allows you to take physical delivery. And in that case, you would have to, so there are these contracts on the system and then you can take delivery on those particular contracts. But when it comes to investor related contracts, so which are the SM sports contracts, um, these ones are not physically delivered, they are cash settled because we understand that um, investors are pretty, uh, typically not interested in taking the physicals, they just want to leverage on the opportunity in the market. Okay, I think that answers your question, Chimalbi. Also, I had something Yusuf is asking, can you go deeper into the fixed income commodity and other options available? And then if I didn't get to sell the commodities within the circle, what happens? So I'll take the second question first. And I think I answered it when, the previous, when someone asked a question previously. So if you don't exit your position um, based on the market information you have and the market reset, the only risk you hold is that the price of your assets can go down, the value of your assets can go down. That's the only risk. Your commodities, your, your instruments remain intact and you can transact at any point in time, but you only run the risk that the value of your assets will go down. That's one. Um, can you, so for the fixed income, um, instruments. So they are pretty much like the everyday fixed income instruments you have. 
So there's the guarantee, there's the guaranteed return, and there's the fixed period of time where you have that investment running. So it's pretty much the same thing as the fixed income structure we have across board. Um, yeah. So we have Ola here asking in this alternative for the investors to lose money in commodity trading. trading sorry. Come again, I did get the question. Okay, Ola is asking in this alternative investment, is there any possibility for the investors to lose money in commodity trading? Yeah, I said so. The, like, so let me reiterate this again. The risk in commodities trading is price risk. And that's one of the greatest advantages you also have. So the risk is that if you buy today at say 100 Naira, if you don't pay attention to the market well, you don't follow market information that is provided to you, it's possible that if the market is going down and you're still holding your instrument, and the market, say, for instance, goes down to 90,000, 90, 90, right? So that's a risk of you losing some money. But if you leverage on the information that is available, there's a very low risk of you losing that money if you leverage on the information that is provided to you. And which is why I said this market, you have to be active. You have to follow the market on a day-to-day -day basis um, and then take advantage of the opportunity that show up on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, you can't hold the kind of instruments you have now. You can't hold them and leave them there for months without paying attention to them. No, it's 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 it won't ha it's won't, it's not very applicable here. I think I can see if somebody say, "Can a commodity price get to zero? No, it can't. Nothing. <laughs> so commodities are pretty much economic. Econ they have economic value. And anything that has economic value, unlike um, some of that, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. So we can yeah, I, I saw a question pop up, and the question says that um, can commodity prices go to zero? No, you can't. You can never have that kind of situation where commodity prices go to zero. Where um, so, and the reason is this: commodities have economic value, and then any any item that has economic value can never go to zero can never go to zero. So what you then have is that you can have prices declining say by 10%, 15%. So also you have possibility of prices appreciating as we saw last year, we soybeans for instance doubled last year, right? It, it grew by 100%, right? But then you can't have a situation where that price will now go to zero. No, it's not possible. It's only items that don't have economic value that go to zero. Any item that has an economic value like commodities will never go to zero. Thank you so for that. So I think we will take two more questions, then we'll let Stephanie come and introduce us to comment. I said we'll take two more questions, then we'll let Stephanie come on. Um, Daya is asking, it, would one need to go through a broker to invest in the market? Yeah, I, I would. Should I just defer that question to when Stephanie comes up? Okay, that's fine. So Daya, please hold on. Stephanie will answer your question. And I think we should take a building is asking what are the prices in consonant with the general market price or based on international commodity price. So it's asking are the prices in consonant with general market price or based on international commodity price. Yeah, pretty much they are in, they are, they are in alignment with um, the prices in the local markets and for some commodities that have international price benchmarks, they are also close to it. So if you look at your cocoa, for instance, and you're looking at the international benchmark. So first of all, look at the price locally and then 
look at the price on the international front as well to see how you can play around it. But then there isn't a situation where the prices are, are, are far off what we have in the domestic market or any of the or, or any market that matters for that matters. I think that answers your question, Abiodun. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yusuf. So I think we should allow Stephanie come on now so that she can take us through starting commodities investments on COMEX and the other questions we are turning to after Stephanie is done. So if you have any more questions, kindly add them to the Q&A chat and it will be attended to. Thank you. All right, thank you, Destiny. Can you guys hear me? Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, we can hear you, Stephanie. All right, good. Can you also see my screen? Can you guys see my screen? Good afternoon, everyone. So um, today we will be discussing um, how to make money in commerce. So you have discussed how the commodities market works and how we can take advantage of the benefits here. So I will be discussing how commerce comes in to try and make it easy for investors to tap into this alternative form of investment that's available. So in my presentation, I'll be going over what commerce is, why it was created, how you can make money from it, and how you can earn both on your proprietary trades and commissions earned by being a promoter. So I saw a lot of questions about that and how you can trade through a promoter or a broker and- Hi, Stephanie. Uh, Sorry. Hello? Your audio is a bit blurred. We can't really hear you clearly. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. It's much better. Okay. So I was saying that I will be discussing how comics um, comes into everything that you has said. So YouTube has gone over what um, the commodity market entails and how um, you can enter and exit the market, the right time to enter and exit. So I will be going on to talk about comics, introducing you to comics, how you can make money from it, what it is in entirety, and how you can make um, money on your proprietary trade and as well as commissions earned by being a promoter. I said I saw a lot of some questions on um, becoming a promoter and how you can trade between promoter or broker. So I hope my presentation will be able to answer some of these questions that we have. So Comics is basically an action platform that allows investors to trade commodities. For now, every commodity is available in Comics and it's an all-inclusive platform that offers um, market education, a good, um, simple user interface, and basically allows you to diversify your income investment other than conventional investment options. And um, we're licensed by the Security Exchange Commission. So it's um, basically different from, entirely different from the crowdfunding. Hello, Stephanie. Sorry, the audio is still. Okay, maybe Hello, I'll turn off. Hello, is it Clara now? Okay. I'll just turn off my video and hope that it's better. Yes, it is. It's audio. Clara now. Okay, so I'll just go back. I guess. Yes, it's. Okay. So I said Comex is an exchange platform that allows investors to easily trade commodities. For now, agri commodities are available on Comex. So you're able to get access to investing in agri commodities easily with a great user interface, as well as access to market data that informs your investment decisions. So why was Comex um, created? So if I would reference um, Yusuf's point on the fact that um, the way we buy other forms of investment, um, like the stocks are in our bonds, there's no physical products, right? So we can be combined with a physical product. So Comex comes in to ensure that all of the storage issues are not investors' problems. So we do have that sorted out in terms of having warehouses that have the physical product that you are trading. So for instance, if you were to trade or buy maize right now, you are rest assured that there is a unit, a one kg unit or a hundred kg unit of that maize that you are buying in a warehouse 
across, um, we have over 200 warehouses across Nigeria, right? So that's entirely why Connex was created to give investors access to the commodity market in an easy way and enables them to um, trade in an efficient market that gives some form of transparency and offers price um, data. Hello, Stephanie. So sorry. I think the audio is still not clear. Am I breaking? Yes, Hello. you are actually breaking a little bit. Oh, wow. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you clearly now. Unfortunately, so, when we ask, can you hear me now? You can actually hear me, but when I continue, you probably will not. Yes, that's true. So where, where, where do you think I, you lost me? Okay, so Hello. we have people say they didn't really hear you from the beginning. So if you can, please just summarize and start, maybe give a quick summary of what you've said so far. And also, okay, so maybe. I'll start off from the beginning. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so I was saying that COMEX is an exchange platform that allows investors to access the commodities market. So COMEX allows you to trade agri commodities with ease. So you're able to get access to market in a transparent way. So you're able to know on daily prices, weekly prices, and it helps investors to make decisions on their trade, when to enter, when to exit, if you would like to hold longer or not, right? And we have been able to um, backward integrate uh, business model to ensure that when you're trading any commodity, it is um, securitized. So what that means is that there's a physical product of that commodity that you are trading warehoused somewhere in um, Nigeria, right? And um, some of our processors are able to get that delivered um, to them. So I would have a live demo uh, towards the end of my presentation to try to show what all of this means. Am I clear now? Yes, you are clear now. I'll just check in with the... Can you people hear Stephanie clearly, please? Hello, can you hear me now? Okay, Chinel says no. Chinel, okay, something says it's better now. Okay, um, Taiwo says your mic is cloaking and inaudible. So maybe the problem is with the mic and the some network. People hear, some people can't hear. Cannot hear clearly. So, you know, I will just allow Stephanie to continue. So if you can't hear her, please indicate in the chat. We're well, sorry about that. You know, Nigeria has network limitations. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Okay. Please so, continue, uh, Stephanie. All right. So just to recap, for those that didn't hear me, Comex again uh, is a digital platform, an exchange platform that allows investors to access agri commodities and ease. So you're able to um, trade commodities, get access to market data, and know when to enter and exit the market. And we've been able to make it easy for anyone to trade by simplifying and demarcating the categories of investors that we have. So right now we have both corporate and individual investors. And when you're signing, signing in on the platform as a new investor, you're able to know what category you fall into. And all you need basically to get started is your um, basic income, your name, your email address, and your form of identification, right? So we've been able to ensure that onboarding process is less than 90 seconds, as long as your network connectivity is good. So what are the type of players that we have on the comments? So we have um, three main people that um, trade on comments. We have investors, promoters, and brokers. Because we know that um, for the sake of this uh, webinar, we have more um, individual investors online. So um, the live demo would focus more on investors and promoters. 
who are investors. Investors are basically individual members like you um, who get to buy and sell on their own account and be part of the promoters community. So um, hopefully my live demo will show all the process. But basically, once an investor is making a trade, you trade through a promoter. And a promoter is someone who wishes to act as a broker but doesn't have a license. So you're able to buy and sell on your own account as well and also create a community of individual investors and earn commissions off of the trade done in your community. So I've said that again. A promoter is someone that basically um, has information about the commodities market, like some people might have been in different webinars that we've had in the past, and to some certain level, they know about the commodities market, and they believe they can play in this market well and actually advise for that. But they do not have a license to actually um, operate as a broker or invest on behalf of an, um, of an investor. So we created a process where um, there's a demarcation between broker and investor and get a promoter that can help to pass this information and, and can create a community on complex. So brokers are individuals or institutions that can have the power and ability to buy and sell on behalf of an investor because they have a license by the security and exchange commission. Right. Hope I was clear, just in any confirm. Yes, um, we still have some technical issues right now. They cannot hear you clearly, as stated in the chat. So. Okay, I'm seeing the responses. Wow. So I'm not sure why it's, see some people can hear me, some cannot. If someone somebody says he can hear me. So I guess it's uh, network issues on both ends. But yes, the slides will be shared. The recording of this webinar would also be shared. Okay, so basically on COMEX, it's quite easy to place a trade on COMEX. So once you're able to get logged in, um, you're able to fund your wallet. So the basics you need to do is to start by funding your wallet, picking out the commodity of your choice that you would like to trade in and um, put up a price at the market um, current price and put up a buy order. And um, automatically you should get matched if it's the, if you place your um, price point at the current market price. And, if not, it takes a, we have a seven day window that allows your trade to be matched if there's another offer that suits or matches your um, offer price. And once your order gets matched, you get a contract note, uh, which says like um, a receipt to so ensure that you have your um, portfolio, your commodity, your portfolio, right? And then your asset is credited. Same thing happens on the sell side, where you also have held for a time, and then you put up a sell order. Once it gets matched, also within that same seven day window, you also receive your contract notes and your wallet is credited. So here you have two options either to invest that money, or you can request for withdrawal when your money is immediately sent to your bank account. So now, um, like I said, there are two types of investors. Three types, the individual investor and promoter and broker. For the sake of this webinar, we'll focus on investors and promoters. So I'll show you how you can make money and trade as an investor. So I'll be talking about how you can become a promoter now. So in becoming a promoter, this is, like I said earlier, someone that wishes to act as a broker but doesn't have a second license. I will create a process that allows you to create and manage a community of individual investors after they are onboarded as clients. And you're able to provide advisory services to these investors in your community. And right now, we've been able to create like a mini um, WhatsApp group that allows you to engage your um, investors via the chat um, feature 
and um, um, the forum where you know, um, investors can create um, thread discussions and ensure that your um, community is engaged. Mm -hmm. We also provide um, you with uh, market reports, a more detailed market report than the um, individual investor because we do realize that you will be asked a lot of questions about the market and this will aid you in communicating with them and helping them in making informed investment decisions. And basically the difference between the KYC for an individual investor and um, a promoter is basically your billion, right? And that um, basically demarcates that um, KYC process. And you also have to go through a promoter training um, certification program where we expose you in detail into the community market, how to analyze market data, and how to manage your community better. Right. After that um, training, you get a certificate which will be able to upload and upgrade from an individual investor to a promoter, and then you can create and start up your community and start uh, sharing your referral codes to get people on board. So what are the benefits of the community promoter? Basically, uh, you get a 0.5% on your trades. So right now, when you put up a trade, you actually see the put down on, on all of the um, commissions paid from Z fee to the exchange fee, collateral management, the VAT. So you see that the broker fee is 0.75. This commission is broken down between the promoter and the broker. So because you know that brokers have access to institutional clients and HNI clients, you don't like to give them a lower um, commission base, which is at 0.25, and promoters get a 0.5% on each trade done in their community. So you're able to, so for instance, if um, already has um, 100 people in his community. Each time one person goes to be treated, he earns a 0.5% on um, the trade done by that member. Right? You also get access to real-time market data and regular training to ensure that you are up to date and you can provide advice free to your community members. So what um, skills do you possess to actually, should you possess to actually become a promoter? Basically, for as long as you are um, passionate about um, investment, you understand and, and are willing to learn about the commodities in the market, you have a convening power, you can communicate effectively, and you have um, some marketing skills. Um, we do things that you be able to become a promoter. Once you go to a training and get um, above 70% on this assessment, you will be given a certificate and upgraded to become a promoter. Okay, Stephanie, thank you very much. So I'll just um, switch to the live demo now. Just I can actually hear you better now. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'll just stop sharing now and switch my screen to a live demo. So since I'm clearer now, I'd like to make this part more interactive, right? So if you can hear me and you're willing to participate, can I get a response in the chat box? Because I'll need you guys to be fully with me for this live demo. So can you see my screen now? So we have Chimaobi. He says he's ready. Great. Thank you, Chimaobi. So basically, when you for the purpose of this um, demo, I will be using the web version. So we have both the web and the app. So you can um, get started by downloading but either on the iOS or the Google Play Store, or if you use the web version to sign up straight up. So um, right now, I'm using the web version for this demo. Thank you all for your responses. So once you come on the web, this is basically the landing page that gives you some basic information on what we do and how you can trade and invest. Um, let's just go down a bit. So
This gives you a three-step on how you can get started. So I'll just click to get started. It's also at the top. So like I mentioned earlier, we have two types of um, two categories where you want to sign up, individual or corporate. So for individual investors, to become an individual investor, you're basically a, an individual that wants to invest their, your personal money. A corporate is someone that wants to invest on behalf of their company, right? So that's basically the demarcation of both. So I'll be using the individual um, sign up for this demo. So I'll just, um, if you guys could indulge me, I'd like someone to volunteer and let's just try and see how we can sign up. So I'd like someone who hasn't signed up on Comex yet and is willing to provide me their information for this um, next step. So I'll require your name, phone number, email address, and I'd like an email address that is um, available for you to get an OTP. Right, so if I could get um, a volunteer, that would be great. Okay, so I can see Dio says it's available for participation. So Dio, please, can you share your email address and phone number? for this purpose, if you have not signed up on Comex yet. How can we see? All right, so can you provide your name? The first name, your last name, email address. Okay, so Dio is Dio Olajide. That's his name. Please share your email address, Dio. So Dio's email address is vicolever 2002 at yahoo.com. Your occupation, please. Are you an entrepreneur, student, or employee? All right, for the sake of time, I'll just click one. And So here you can see referral code. So if um, you're a promoter, this is where you will be sharing your referral code with someone and that will automatically get the person into your community or call it sign up, right? So for this, if anybody online here is a current promoter, this would be great to share your referral code before I go to the next slide. But if I don't get anyone, I'll just move ahead. So I will just use a generic password that you could change later. So I use a very generic password. Okay, so that's basically the um, process of signing up. I wouldn't go through that process again, so it's not too, I don't take too much of the time. So I'll just go straight to signing in. 
so we can go directly to um, today's business. Can you confirm you can see my screen, the overview screen? And if I'm audible enough. We can see your screen, Stephanie. All right. Okay, so I'll just give this a quick second to load. I guess my network is really slow today. So basically, this is um, the overview page, your, your dashboard, basically, once you sign up and log in to uh, COMEX on the web. This is the web version. So basically, this shows you your cash balance, the security value. The quick actions basically allows you to fund your wallet and quickly make a trade. You can also get support by speaking with any of our um, customer service agents as well. And then here you can see your portfolio position. This basically shows you pie chart for all of the commodities that you purchased, right? And you get also get access to um, you also get access to the latest news. Um, you also get learn to trade videos where you can basically get started. So for people that are just joining, um, signing up uh, here in about commodity market for the first time, the basic terminologies and how to get started. We have ENPGs provided, try and accelerate that process and get you started and avoid it easy. Um, we also have, um, like um, you see, for the about um, the market data and ensuring that you're able to enter and exit the market on time. We have the market reports where you can easily um, get access to. Right. And then we have a watch list. So if you have made, um, You've traded any commodity in your portfolio and you like to keep tabs on it, you can just add it to your watch list and you'll be getting notifications on um, the price movement on that particular commodity that you've selected to add to your watch list. So that's Hello, basically. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we lost you for a moment there. Okay, so I was saying that this is basically your dashboard that allows you to find. Um, quick actions in terms of funding your wallet, making it trade easily and getting support and speaking with um, customer representatives. You also have the cash balance, which shows you how much you have in your wallet. So your cash balance is different from the value of your investments. I saw a question on that earlier. So your cash balance is, I have transferred 1,000 Naira into my wallet. My cash balance would have 1,000 Naira. Or if I had had a balance before, maybe now I have 4,373.64. If I send in 1,000, this will increase to 5,373 Naira for couple. It will not affect this amount. This basically shows you your, the value of your investment. So, all of these three things you can see in my portfolio position right here amounts to my security value, right? So now your total um, worth would be the addition of your cash balance and your security value, which is also known as the value of your investment on the app version, right? Um, I also spoke about the um, market report that's available to ensure that you enter and exit the market um, easily because you're able to get access to weekly market prices, knowing how the commodities are occurring in the market. If they've increased and they've appreciated or depreciated, you can make informed decisions on your investment. You also have learn to trade section where you find e-learn videos to get you started on um, basic terminologies and how you can trade on comments. And you also have access to latest news that are related to um, of the commodities market or anything that can actually affect the prices of these commodities. So now I'll just go straight to the market um, menu. So under the market menu, we have six main um, features. We have a product view, we have the order book, you have the price history, your open orders, 
close trees, cancel trees. So starting with the product view, here you're able to see what products are available or not available, what board it is. So your board basically gets you to know. So we have four types of boards available on comments. So we have your cash spot. So your cash spot um, contract or board basically is the same as um, the spot contract that allows you to buy low and sell high, right? So basically, you are making gains from the appreciation on the market, but you're losing money from the appreciation on um, the market, right? Then you have your OTC board, which is which means the over the counter, right? Basically, this um, is more for the traders that actually buy the physicals and need it for either to trade or to sell to farmers. And we also have the fixed income. So they, like what um, you mentioned earlier, you're guaranteed on your principal, and then you are just uh, making gains on the interest, right? On like your spot where you can either gain or lose both your principal and um, interest, right? And then we have the delivery spot. So this allows um, the traders to get delivery on the item that they bought, right? And then we have the buy and sell. Basically, this shows you the um, prices that are being offered on the buy side and the prices being offered on the sell side. And they also get access to the daily changes and the season to date change. And they have access to the current price of that particular commodity. For instance, we have a mint that is currently priced at 175. And this shows you the number of deals that have been done on a particular. For instance, this again has had a total of 516 deals on it. Yeah. So if you would like, if you want to buy, for instance, you just click on the buy button, or if you want to sell, you click on the sell button. So let's just do a demo on that. And try to buy something. Can you pardon my network as it's a bit tricky for the time? All right, so um, once you put up a buy order, you get to see the trade, you get to see your cash balance, you get to see the community that you joined. And if you've not joined the community, upon checkout, you will be required to join the community. And we do highlight the top performing communities to help ensure that whoever, whichever community you join is an engaged community where you can get access to quick responses and um, market information. So this shows you the amount of um, the quantity you're about to buy, um, how many units you own presently of this particular commodity. So if you've not bought before, this will not apply to you. And it shows you the current price um, of this commodity and how much here, yeah, this is where you're able to um, put up a buy price, which um, allows you a band of either plus 10% or minus 10% of this current price. And like I mentioned earlier, you have a seven day um, ability to ensure that your trade is matched. If I place an order in um, seven days, if it's not matched, it gets canceled automatically and your money is um, refunded to you, right? So that money doesn't even come to us. It's in, it's in, and, um, in a third party account where you can also get access to scenes on that event account, right? 
And here you have access to see the product information to know what type of products um, you're buying. If you click on it, you are able to see um, the information on this particular tree. And you can see the name, the security code, the contract size, that's one kg and it's the grade one, meaning it's um, the best uh, quality, the moisture level, what type of board you're buying from out of the four available boards, and um, the currency, and where this um, particular commodity is warehouse. So here it's in Ibado, one of our warehouses in Ibado. Right. And you're able to see what I mentioned earlier on the either plus or minus 10% of the contract value of the basic trade off. So, going back to the trade part, so we'll just put up this order. Now, and this shows you the breakdown of the total payments, right? So this is the exchange fee of 0.5% set fee and profit fee. So like I mentioned earlier, this 0.7% is divided between the broker and the promoter, where the broker ends in 0.25% and the promoter ends in 0.5%. And then of course the bad fee. And then you're able to place your order by clicking on this. And you can see that um, your portfolio will be updated when in March of course, right? So you get access to knowing when your trade has matched or if it hasn't matched, right? So if it matches, you get um, a contract note immediately, which is sent to your email address, right? So let's go to the other book now. You can see some hands are raised. We will take questions at the end. The live demo. So let me just um, start this page. Okay, so um, what is looking um, um for long short is asking like how can he um log into this and do the transaction? So on the app version, right? You're able to get access to this on the product um available the same. Um, you go on the market and get to um, open orders, and that's where you're able to make trades. That's to for long sure. So your order book um, shows you all of the products available as well and markets between the buy order and sell order. So your buy orders are basically all of the bid prices that have been put up and this is where you're able to sell. So from the investor point of view, if I want to sell, I go to the buy order. From the investor point of view, if I want to buy, I go to the sell order. That's why you see that there's a sell button under the buy order and a buy button under the sell order. So, um, for instance, if I wanted to buy that same commodity I bought under the product view, I would come and look for made here, which is listed here, and I click buy. So you can do the same process here. So there are two options. So this basically shows you all of the prices that have been 
either be needed or offered on either the buy or order or the sell order. And you're able to make a decision off of the available prices. But you have to take note of the current price. So for instance, um, we have cocoa, which is currently priced at 1220. And you are seeing under the bid offer, there's someone willing to sell at 1,120. There's also someone willing to sell at 1,219. So this is where you uh, make your decision of where, how much you are willing to um, sell or buy from. But you also have to consider the current price to ensure that your, mat your trade gets matched immediately. So your price history um, shows you the um, prices that have happened on these commodities in the past. And you're able to sort via the date and um, back date or push forward from, from the current date to the previous um, date that you're interested in. I just a second for this to load. I can still see that some people can't hear me. Please, if you can hear me, can you indicate? So I'm sure that um, I'm not speaking to myself because like Suleiman said, if you can't hear me, the purpose of the webinar is defeated. So can you indicate if you can hear me? Okay, some people can hear me. So I guess we could go ahead. If I was, um, select me, it's taking time to load because of my network. Um, but basically, it shows you the price history from as back as last year, 2020, January. And you're able to see how these commodities have performed. Um, over the years. Under your open orders, you can see um, the orders that you've put up that are yet to be matched. And your closed trades are orders that you've put up that have been matched. And your canceled orders are orders that have been canceled by you or by the automatic cancellation that happens after the seven day window of putting up a trade, right? So I will just skip through this because of um, time. I think we've been we've exceeded the time allocated to me. So your portfolio, let me just rush to your portfolio. So your portfolio shows you your security and feature your cash and the reports. So under your security, you're able to see your total market value and your available balance and your land value. So your total market value shows you your security value again, like I mentioned earlier. So how much this is still um, loading and that's why it's um, showing you zero. Um, your market value shows you how much your investment has accrued to as that the day of checking it and your available value shows you how much you have left in your wallet. And your land value shows you how much you have in terms of what you put up, the trade you put up and that hasn't been matched 
or the transfer you made that hasn't reflected in your wallet yet. And then under your cash, you're able to see how to fund your wallet or withdraw. And under making a bank transfer, um, you're able to put up um, a transfer price, let's say for instance, 10,000, 100,000, and you are required to generate a token. So what this does is to allow us to identify a, um, an investor's um, transfer. So for instance, um, GD transferred 5,000 Naira, but his name that he used to register on Comet might be um, Chidiora. And because we care about your money and do not want to credit the wrong account, we have created a token that is um, unique to you when you um, want to transfer. And that helps us to make the payments into your wallet seamless. So you have to generate this token. So we found out that some people have our um, account number seen and they just transfer to um, the account without generating this token. What this does is gives you a longer time period before your transfer is reflected in your comics wallet because we can't guarantee that it's you sometimes. So we have to ensure that it's the right person. So this token generation is very important. You can also transfer um, into your wallet. You can also create your wallet via the card payment that allows you to pay um, via through Paystack or Flutterweave. And you can also request for a withdrawal as well here. Then your report shows you um, all of the transactions you've done. So if you um, did a physical delivery, if you did so any transaction through the our um, contract, spot contract, you would be in here. But if you did regular spot in, um, contracts or fixed investments, you'll be checking here for all of your um, account statements. This basically shows you um, the transactions that you've done over time, uh, showing you the credit and the debits you've done um, over time. So going to your community, which is where we've got a lot of questions. So this is a promoter um, account. So this person has a community. Right. right. So under here, you're able to um, see what this um, community is about. You can see the description of the community and you start from discussion where you can start a topic on something that's related to the commodities market, to the commodities available, and where um, community members can participate and follow the discussion that is being done. Here you can see on that trade, you can see all of the trades that your community members have done. And you can also see your total commissions that have been accrued to you. So this community, this promoter hasn't uh, doesn't have anybody in this community. So please do not be like this promoter. Um, we advise that you keep your community engaged with um, as many members as possible. So ensure that you're not delisted. And then you also have um, the chats box where you can directly chat with an investor an investor can directly chat with you and get um, information instantly. Um, so that's um, basically about it. Um, I think at this point, I will just stop sharing my screen and allow for questions. Thank you, Stephanie, for taking us through. Uh, apologies once again to everyone on this call as regards the network. That's unforeseen circumstances. So we have some questions. Um, so we have Dial who asks, would one need to go through a broker to invest in the market? 
No, not necessarily. So the way the platform is designed, investors trade through a promoter and promoters trade through a broker. So if you come on sign up and um, on board as an individual investor, you would be trading through a promoter and not a broker. Okay. Uh, if you saw the beginning of Stephanie's presentation, she told you that we have investors, promoters, and brokers. So investors trade through promoter com communities and the brokers are the ones that match and perform the trades on behalf of the investors. So please do the exchange work on weekends. This is Chima Obi Axen. He okay, wants to so, know if he uh, can buy on Saturday. Yes, you can, you can put up a buy or sell order or during the weekend. Um, however, your transfers, when you make um, transfers into your wallet, um, they might take longer than the two to three hour time frame given. So that's the only difference. Once you're able to put up a um, trade at the current price, it should match automatically. Um, but when you're making transfers into your COMEX wallet, it might just take longer than the two to three hours stated during weekends. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. I think that answers your question, Chimaobi. Ola is asking at Yusuf, okay, sorry, Yusuf has dropped off the score. He has some things to attend to at the moment. So he's asking, I think the communities are not active. If you check through most of the information, they are about four or five months old. So Stephanie can answer this for you. So what's the question? You, he said, I think the communities are not active. If you check through, most of the information there is about four or five months old, a goal. Okay, um, so um, yeah, thank you for that um, question. And um, what's it called? Observation. Hello. So uh, we did notice that as well, that we saw some um, promoters not being engaged, which is why I mentioned that um, in order to not get delisted as a promoter, you have to be active and engaged, right? And we did some cleaning up um, on that. And we, we realized that some people become promoters to evade commission fees. So those that have one, those that they are the only ones in their community, we are currently going to be process of delisting them to ensure that only active promoters are um, on board to ensure that when individual investors um, click on their community, they are rest assured that they are working with active promoters. So going forward, you'll be seeing a lot more activity on um, the promoter communities going forward. Thank you, Stephanie, for that. I think that answers your question, Ola. So we have Samson Yusuf asking a couple of questions. He says he noticed some commodities aren't available, aren't made available on the platform for transactions, even though they are available on the platform. So I think you mean some commodities, you can see them on your dashboard, but they are not on your spot wallet for buying and selling. I think that's what you mean by that, Samson. So he wants to ask why that is. Why some commodities are not available. Okay, so right yes. now, um, so like you have mentioned, the um, <clears throat> calendar goes from October, November to the next year, um, around uh, September, August, when the season is about to end. So there's some commodities that are available from um, investors are willing to sell, right? But the new season commodities that are currently available on Comex are cocoa, maize, paddy rice, and um, soybeans. Every other commodity that is available to buy at higher prices based off on the fact that other investors that have been holding now want to sell those commodities, right? So if you had come on board a few months ago as at, let's say, 
um, September, we'd have seen that maize was sold at two something, it was about 220 something. And now you have maize at 175, which is because the new season has started and prices have um, gone down, right? So all year around, spot products are usually available to buy and sell, but the new season starts at um, during um, October, November. Okay. He also asks, do I get to be charged when I sell and buy commodities, even at a loss position? Oh, uh, yes, you do. So, um, the onus is on the investor to keep track of their investments. And that's why we've been able to provide market data. We provide daily um, um, market prices that is sent to your um, email address if you have an account on Comex. We also provide weekly um, data, um, price data that is also sent to you and is also available on the Comex platform. So um, you are required, especially when you trade a spot contract to watch the markets because um, well, the benefits of spot contracts is that it has a high reward, which now comes with high risk. And that's why you have to um, take into cognizance the uh, market changes. So you have to watch um, the reports to ensure that your position doesn't um, leave you at um, a loss. So okay. you still pay commission prices. So I think I'm saying that answers your question. He also asked, do I get to be charged extra when I join a community as I know they have some percentage when I invest? So Sam no. saying. So no, you do not. Um, because uh, right now it's compulsory for you to treat with a promoter. So we do not mind, we do not increase the commissions that you'll be paying, it's still the same. There's no extra charge by trading through a promoter. Okay, thank you very much, Stephanie. It's almost two, so I'm well, just going to take five more questions and then we'll close out this session. So if you have any questions, this is the best time to send them in. So we have, Daniel asking, what is the difference between trading and investment? Okay, um, <clears throat> they are um, a bit similar, right? So you trade, your trading makes, means that you're either buying or selling, and then your, it's still investment, right? It's a form of investment by trading commodities meaning you get to gain um, on the appreciation that happens on the commodities that you invest in, right? Or trade on. So it's similar. So maybe I will just um, simplify it by saying maybe the trading works better for spot contracts and investments work better for the fixed um, contracts. But they mean basically the same thing because when you trade your, um, interest still accrues to the value of your investment. So it's similar. Okay. Thank you very much. So Shola is asking, what is the exchange doing about market liquidity moving forward? What is the word? What is the exchange doing about market liquidity going forward? Okay, great. Um, so um, we are working a, a number of market makers to ensure that there's liquidity in the market. So what that means is that there's always going to be um, an available buyer and seller to ensure that people's trades that are put up are um, automatically matched. So right now there's a seven day window by the time um, most of these uh, market makers are onboarded, that um, window would be drastically reduced to about two to three days, if not less. So there are um, efforts being made to ensure that the market is liquid through onboarding uh, market makers. And we as an exchange also provide that service as well. I hope this answers your question. 
Shola. So we have also Shola and um, Chimao B, I think. They're asking, how can you join the community and how can already registered or unregistered clients be onboarded on the community? Okay, um, to join a community um, on comments, you're basically going to go to the community section if you're an individual um, investor, and then you click on any co um, community of your choice and you click the join button and that automatically gets you into that community. The second um, way to join a community is upon um, placing a trade. And when you're placing a trade, you um, get um, a couple of um, options to join either the top five and you're able to join a community. For Same for um, unregistered clients. So if you're unregistered, the easy way is to get signed up log in and also go to the community um, menu and select any community of your choice and join. So you can see that joining your community is very easy. Thank you very much, Stephanie. So I'm just going to take two more questions and I think we'll call it a day. So someone wants to know, this is Chinelu. She wants to know what is a spot contract and why is it called spot soybean instead of just soybean? soybean. Okay, so um, your spot contract is basically, um, for lack of a better word, and basically layman understanding is buying low and selling high in order to make gains from the appreciation on that asset, right? So in bringing it into context, so for the soybeans, right, the spot contract of that soybean would mean that I'm buying soybeans at the beginning of the season, hoping to hold before the season ends and sell off, right? So that's the spot contract. So what was the second question? Said, why is it called spot serving instead of just soy serving? Okay, so because we also, like I mentioned earlier during the live demo, there are four types of boards, right? We have the spot contract, we have the fixed income, we have the OTC, which is the over the counter, and we have the delivery um, spot. So what that means is the spot contract, like I said, is buying low and selling high and hoping to make um, um, gains on the appreciation. And that is symbolized with an S in front of every um, commodity. So for instance, your soybeans will be SS, um, BS, right? So that same commodity is also being traded in the OTC board. That's over the counter board where a trader or a farmer comes into the warehouse to actually buy that physical commodity. And if you check the platform properly, you'll be able to see that you see some SS, um, BS and OSBS, um, right? That's the over-the-counter one. So we had to demarcate these boards to ensure that different, to suit different, the different categories of um, players we have on the platform. So that's basically the major uh, reason why it's called sports soybeans and not soybeans. Okay. Thank you very much, Stephanie. And for your second question, Chinelu, what does it take to join a community? All you need to do is select your community on your dashboard to join the community. Thank you. So we're going to um, take the- A lot of people here are using the app. So when you're using the app, right, you have um, your menus that ranges from your home market, portfolio reports and more. So under more, you click on more and then you see community, right? And then there are two options, either my community or all community. So if you are a promoter, you would see those two options. If you're an individual investor, you will see all communities. And when you click on it, you get to see all the communities that are available. And you could just um, skim through and pick any one of your choice.
I think this answers your question. We have a couple of questions that we're asking how to join a community. And I think this answers all those questions. Thank you very much, Stephanie. So Ajibola Shenwu is asking, how do I get instant matching? And this will be the second to last question we'll take right now. Okay, so um, on the platform, you get to know the current price of a commodity. You also get to know the best um, buy price and the best sell price of that same of that same commodity. So to get your trade matched instantly, it is advisable to put it up at the current price being offered, either 10% higher than that current price being, um, for instance, for um, maize, that's 175. 10% of that will be about um, 190 something and 10% lower than that to be about 150 something, right? So that's basically how to get your match, um, your trade match instantly. You'd see the other um, available prices that can range within like, either higher than the current price or lower than um, the current price. So it's always advisable to play, to buy at that current price and that's what gets your order match immediately. But at the end of the day, the price that you put up is based on your discretion. Thank you very much, Stephanie. So we'll take the last question from Shima Obi. And this is still about communities. He's asking on what basis do I make the best decision when trying to join a community? Okay, so um, we've been able to um, categorize um, communities based on performance and we're constantly improving on that to ensure that uh, we show investors the top five um, communities and that will be improved on really. Um, but we try not to advise um, investors on the communities to choose because we try to give everybody um, in, um, equal playing field. Um, but because we want to ensure that there's a level of activity um, that is adhered to, we are motivating them and putting up a weekly top five, which will commence next month. So I think from that, you'll be able to see the top five performing communities that um, you can choose from. Okay, thank you very much, Stephanie, for this very insightful. We have one question. Daya is asking, how does one become a promoter or broker? So that's the last question Stephanie is taking, but okay. to answer you, Daya, we have a promoter's training that we do, and all you need to do is ask for the links and we'll provide that for you to register for the promoter training. Yes, so I hope that answers you, Daya. For all the other questions, please reach out to us on Telegram. We are Comex by Apex on Telegram. And you can direct the questions to your client advisors, Dami, Steven, and myself, and would answer you promptly. So we've come to the end of the session. We overspent our time and our apologies for the network issues that were experienced. That was of foreseen circumstances. So I wish you a very happy weekend. And we hope to communicate with you more on the Telegram group, which is Comex by Effects. So thank you for taking our time to come to this webinar. It was very insightful for me. I don't know about you. I'm sure you learned something. We'll be having these sessions regularly. So if there are anything that you want us to discuss with you, like I said, reach out to us via email or Telegram. And also you can follow us on social media. Yes, the link is in the chat. I think some, a couple of people are asking for it. I think they joined after I was saying. Okay, so Steven is going to share the link now and Dami, 
I'm going to share the links with you right now. And I will just wait for a couple of minutes for that to be done. But if you go to Telegram and you search, you can see Comex. If you search Comex by Apex, you'll see the Telegram community and you can join. But the link is going to be shared with you now. Also, you'll receive, yes, Steven Tao has shared the link. So I'm just going to leave you guys to click the link and join in on the Telegram. Okay, Chimaobi says, this has been so educative. Thank you very much, Chimaobi. It was nice having you on the call. Please join the Telegram community to interact more with comics experts. We are very happy to help at any point in your commodities investing journey. So if you please indicate if you have shared, if you have joined the Telegram community, I don't want to close the meeting yet until I'm sure you have gotten the links. So if you have gotten the link, kindly indicate, okay, I've joined. Okay, Osas. So welcome to COMEX, everyone that have joined. Thank you, Taiwo. So we're going to close this by two. So I'm going to just leave it to run for two minutes more. And you can sign up on COMEX by the link, which is available. Stephanie just dropped that as well. COMEX at, sorry, comex.fx.com. So click that link and you can sign up on our web. You can download COMEX on your Apple or Play Store. Just type COMEX at FX or COMEX FX and you'll see it come up. COMEX by FX. With the presentation slides we shared as well. Yes, you received the recording and the presentation slides. And also when you go back and review, if you have any more questions, feel free to call out Dami Jacobs or Steven Taiwo on Telegram or sending an email to our COMEX email. So it's 1.59 and in a minute we'll get off this call. Thank you, Stephanie, for joining us and thank you to Yusuf for participating in this educative session. We really appreciate it. So to answer your question, no wheat is not part of the commodities we trade at the moment on COMEX. To find out the commodities that are available on COMEX, you can check our website or check the app and you'll see the eight commodities that we trade, maize, paddy rice, sesame, sorghum, and other commodities that are available, ginger and the others. So it's 2 p.m. now. I wish you an amazing weekend as I'll be ending this call. Thank you very much for every single person that joined. And I hope to have you on another insightful session. Thank you to our facilitators as well. Have a lovely weekend. Goodbye. <laughs>